Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, and today, and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Thank you, Jesus. All right, I want to say greetings now and welcome everybody to the program today. We do appreciate the Lord, children, for the privilege of being with you. And I want to invite you now to be sure, if you can, tune in our website, www.pastorpeterow.com, because I'm excited we got a lot of good articles on there now for you to study into concerning some of these end-time mysteries. And we want to invite you to... Tune in with us at www.livingfaithtelevision also, www.livingfaithtv.com. And that has streaming video that you can watch our program. And do you in, in the West Virginia area, WWVA, at least to the program on that station, 1170 AM, I believe it is. You in that area, it reaches a long distance. And if you want to watch our program, we have a television program. And it's on uh, livingfaithtv.com. Livingfaithtv.com. And that's Tuesday through Saturdays at 6.30 in the evening. And they have streaming video where you can watch our programs live from their website. And also we have a few on my website, www.pastorpeterow.com. So we invite you in all these areas that get our program by radio to if you can, if you got web uh, or uh, internet, you can tune in to their website of Living Faith Television, and they'll uh, have the streaming video, which you can watch a program Tuesday through Saturdays at 6.30. And uh, I'm going to go ahead now and get into the good Word of God. And we've been preaching on the faith for God's people today. So faith comes by obedience also to the Word of God. Let me begin now because I'm going to give you a true entrance into the kingdom of God, not in the future, but right now. Because the kingdom of God is within you. If you'll believe it, let it come in there. But anyway, let's go to the book of St. John, first of all, the 10th chapter. Now remember, in the book of 1 Corinthians 12, Paul said, For by one Spirit, are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentiles? And also, Jesus told Nicodemus that you must be born of water and of the Spirit. And then, of course, Jesus said to Peter, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. So the kingdom is joy, peace, righteousness in the Holy Ghost or the Comforter. Now, I want you to hear the entrance of it. First of all, what Jesus said in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 1, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Now, we're going to show you the door is Jesus. So if you won't go in by the door, but yet you'll climb up another way, then you're a thief and a robber. Okay? But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep, because Jesus is the one that's putting you in. To him the porter openeth, and the porter is the Holy Ghost, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he's put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Now listen to this. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Well, listen to Jesus explain this. This parable spoke Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spoke unto them. All right, listen. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. See, that's the whole key of it is to know Jesus. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, how do you go in by him? He's the door. He shall be saved and shall go in and out. 
and find pasture. In the door, out into God. The blessings. The thief, now that's your enemy, cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. So stay away from that. I am come that they might have life and thank God that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. See? But he that's in Harlan and not the shepherd, they're out here too, whose own the sheep or not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and the wolf scatters them or catcheth them and scatters the sheep. The harlan fleeth because he's a harlan and cares not for the sheep that you paid servants. I am the good shepherd and what? And know my sheep and am known of mine. As a father knoweth me, even so know I the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Now he's done done that. And other sheep I have. Now children, that's not denominations. That's not other religions. Other sheep is us Gentiles. Which I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. See, now, when did this other sheep come in? When old Peter seen his vision while he was on top of the house praying. Remember? And there's in the 10th chapter of Acts, there's a vi uh, vision of a sheep coming down with all kind of four-footed beasts and creatures that the Jews were forbidden of. God spoke to Peter and said, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And he said, Not so, Lord, for I've never eaten anything common. God let him know that what I cleanse, don't call common. Well, Cornelius, an Italian, a Gentile, not a Jew. At that time now, he was praying, doing a lot of good things. And his arms come up before God and God sent an angel and told him, go see Peter. He'll tell you words in 11 chapter Acts where you and your house can be saved. See, Peter had them keys and we're going to show you. Well, if you'll notice now, Cornelius sent the men to Peter. When Peter got back to him, he found out what God's vision meant, that God was coming to the Gentiles. And old Peter commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord after the Holy Ghost was given. So we're going to be showing you children the real true Bible way to know you're born again. I know there's many spirits out here, but I want the one that will be the Word. Now, watch your Bible. First, you've got to recognize the door. Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known to mine. And then if you'll go down to Verse 18, he said, No man takes it from me, talking about his life. I lay it down on myself, and I have power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Well, see, they didn't understand all of that. So Jesus is telling them plainly, My sheep, in verse 27, hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So, study this all out. He's your door, children. He's the entrance through the Holy Ghost. Now, in Matthew 16, Jesus said on this rock, and that rock was not Peter, but yet Peter had the keys. That rock was Christ. And he said, I'm going to build a church. So we're going to go to that church building. In the book of Acts chapter 2, right quick, study it out. But go with me to the book of Acts, and I'm going to give you a promise here that if you're lost, now, I've seen God do this. And you really want to be saved. If you'll take him at his word and obey what Jesus gave to Peter here, I'll give you a promise that you don't have to wait too long for that Holy Ghost. If you truly repent and do what the Scripture teaches, you will have that promise in you. Now, we're going to be showing you this, but in the meanwhile, when you get time, read the whole book of Acts. But chapter 2 was the beginning of the gospel for the Gentiles and the Jews first, of course, and the world. But the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost came back, and most of you studied know a little bit about that, but I want you to go to Acts chapter 2. And I'm just going to go ahead and start at about verse 36. And this is now after the Holy Ghost came back to build the church. 
And of course, Peter had the keys. And here we go. So you listen to this and it'll bring that promise of the kingdom within you. Okay? Verse 36. Therefore, Peter said, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus whom you crucified both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter, notice this, and to the rest of the apostles, they're all there, men and brethren, what shall we do? Now children, their question, what shall we do? They wanted to be delivered and saved. Here's your answer, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent, and that's for us today, and be baptized, that means in water, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, here it is, for the remission of sins, and you shall, thank God, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Children, if you're lost today, or you want that Holy Ghost within you, if you'll obey Acts 2.38 and your heart's really in that, there's no reason God wouldn't give it to you. That's a promise. It don't take him long. We don't have to go to Jerusalem and wait for that promise because they done done that. Now, what happened on the day of Pentecost? Them little disciples, Jesus told them, tarry you in the city of Jerusalem till you've been doomed with power. Well, they did that. They went up there, and on the day of Pentecost, suddenly there came a sound from heaven, like a mighty rushing wind, filled the whole house where they were sitting, and thank God there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a far. And it set up on each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, see, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, there were 17 nations of Jews gathered there. And they got to hear them speaking in their own languages the wonderful works of God. So that's a reason for the tongues that day. But let me tell you how to get the Holy Ghost by the Bible. And let me say also, speaking in tongues is 100% right. And some people, when the Holy Ghost comes on them, they've spoken in tongues or they've prophesied or something great happens and it does every time you'll feel something or other and better yet you'll believe and that's how you know you got it but I'm going to tell you how the Bible teaches for you to really receive it and it's no other way than what I'm reading alright now watch what happened when they heard this they were pricked in their heart said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles me and his brethren what shall we do then Peter said unto them here it is repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, listen, for the remission of sins, your forgiveness. And you shall receive what? The gift of the Holy Ghost. Now that's the Holy Ghost itself. For the promise is unto you and to your children, of course that's the Jews first, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So that's us Gentiles. Now, watch this. Then they, or verse 30, 40, and with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then, verse 41, they that gladly received his word were baptized. That means in water. The same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls and they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. So children, is the name of Jesus Christ the right way? You better believe it. Peter told them to repent. First step. And be baptized. That's in water. Every one of you. Didn't leave none of us out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now listen to me. He didn't put nothing else on to that. And I believe his Lord knows his Lord, but it did not say repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It did not say repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. It said repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. See? And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
Did he say you'd receive it? For the promise is unto you and your children and to all that are far off Gentiles, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. See? And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Now, verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word, come on, they didn't get puffed up and mad. They that gladly received his word were baptized. How did they get baptized? In the name of Jesus Christ. That's it. No other name. They that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And what happened? And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, prayers, and fear came upon ever so, and thank God many signs and wonders were done by the apostles. So children, study this out. As God is my helper today, if you truly obey the Word of God, if you're lost, or you're not sure of your salvation, if you'll obey these men, you can't go wrong. Peter is the one Jesus chose. He never chose Paul, but yet they all had that power of the keys. But Peter was the man that Jesus said, if you'll go read Luke, I mean Matthew 16, Jesus said upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Now the rock wasn't Peter as the lot Catholic teach, but the rock was Christ. See? Peter was never the Pope, never will be. See? But they teach all these things, but that don't make it right. I can teach anything I want to, but if it ain't Bible, it ain't right. Peter was not a pope. There's no such thing as Pope Peter. But yet they named them all after them apostles. But children, do what you want. But Jesus said, I'm going to build my church. And he told Peter, I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom. And when Peter began to tell them how to be saved, they said, what do we do? He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's a promise. They that gladly received his word, they were baptized. The same day, the Lord added 3,000 souls. Now, there was no dividing among Paul and Peter. See, we, it's sad to say, we've got right among our own Jesus named people that's divided over the baptism. Some say they baptize the name of the Lord Jesus, some Jesus only, some this, some that. But children, don't matter what we say, it's what God said. Jesus in the book of Luke 24, verse 44, He said, Thus it is written, Thus it behooved Christ to suffer, rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins be preached in His name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. So if it begin at Jerusalem in His name, then Paul didn't go against Peter, not at all. And in Acts chapter 19, if you remember, let's just go ahead and read it to you. And, and, and these are important things because... Children, I want you to understand that when you study the baptism in water all through the Bible, from Acts all the way through, anywhere you can find, it's not going to be contrary to Jesus Christ. Now, when Jesus said in Matthew 28, 19, when he told these same apostles to go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Well, who was to do that? The apostles. Well, every one of them baptized in the name of Jesus. So what's that telling you? He had to be the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Because he said, I come in my Father's name. And go read it out. Now the commandment was to be baptized in the name of the Father. And this is what God's are bringing people to the understanding. Now, some of you may be really seeking to know the truth of these things. Well, then go read your Bible. Because you ain't going to get too many preachers to be willing to baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. But children, it's still the commandment. If you read Acts 10, He commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Now, the Lord's not the name, but it's got a name. Father's not a name, but it's got a name. 
And the commandment was to baptize in the name. See? Now, in Acts 19 right quick, let's just read these things. You at home, if you've been baptized, and they baptize in the water in titles, I'm just going to tell you the truth. Do you need to do it over? I'll put it to you this way. If you want to obey God fully and want to be blessed by these brethren here, the apostles, I'm afraid you'll have to do it over. Because father's not a name. Son is not a name. If you may be a teacher, you got a good education, you know that father's a title. Son is a title. But of somebody. So see, I'm a father, naturally, because I've got children. And I'm a son because I've got a daddy. See, but I'm not two. Well, Jesus had a father, but his father was not like my father, earthly or flesh and blood. His father was the spirit because he said himself, my father that gave me, gave them me is greater than all. See, that's because it could fill the heavens and earth. And Jesus said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Now, we're talking about his father while he's on earth. But as far as himself, he is the father in flesh. So I'm not trying to separate the father and the son. No, sir. When you see me, Jesus said, you've seen the father. Believe thou that I'm in the Father, the Father in me. But while he was on earth, he lived by the Spirit because it was the Holy Ghost that birthed that body in flesh, see? And he lived with the Spirit in him. It's deep, children, but this is what God's bringing out to his end-time people. Now, go to Acts 19 and listen to this, and it'll show you you can't find in the Bible anywhere where they baptized outside the name of Jesus. You can't do it. Now, listen to Acts 19, verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. These were John's disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We've not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Under what then were you baptized? Notice this. They said unto John's baptism. Well, what was John's baptism? Water and repentance. Now, what was Jesus' baptism? Water and the Spirit. But in his name. So watch this. And he said unto them, Under what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. John didn't use no name. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people, here it is, that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. See there? When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, that is not leaving Christ out of it. Why? Because the Bible said, believe on him which should come after him, Verse 4, that is on Christ Jesus. Now, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And a lot of people separate. They said Christ wasn't no part of the name because of the way it said it there. But he was not denying the name of Christ. Not at all, children. Because they did not cross each other. Acts chapter 8. Go back here and let me show you another. And this shows you they all were baptized in his name. Acts chapter 8 right quick. Listen to this. Acts chapter 8. Go to verse 12. This is you read it all when you get time. But when they believed Philip preaching the things, verse 12, when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip, wondering, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had sent unto them, or that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Ghost, for as yet, watch, for as yet it had fallen upon none of them. 
Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Or name, yeah, name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. See, children, that isn't separating. It's all in Jesus' name. And I'll get in that a little later. But anyway, study it out because Simon got baptized, but his heart wasn't right, so he didn't go nowhere. So if your heart ain't right, you're going to have to repent and get it right. That's the only way the Holy Ghost to be given, children. You can go put your name on every church book, every, every pew, and everywhere else you want to. But if it ain't written in heaven, you need to get your heart right. Because Peter said, repent and be converted when a times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord and He sent Jesus Christ. So see, repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And that's exactly what they've done. They first got filled themselves, and then the Holy Ghost began to go into all the world. And they were the witnesses of it. So children, I'm just telling you these things to let you know the plan of salvation is already here. The kingdom of God is already here. And to get in it, you're going to have to be born again. And I'm telling you the truth, if you'll read Acts 2.38, it's a promise like you'll never read it anywhere else. He said, you repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive what? The gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, tongues may come with it. Who knows? Prophesying don't matter as long as you get it. So these are things for you to study up. And children also... We appreciate you. Write us in your prayer requests. If you help us on the programs, we appreciate it. And get on our website. we got these articles, and I believe they'll be a blessing to you. And if you can't get our uh, television program, but you do radio, you can tune in to www.livingfaithtv.com. They have streaming videos at 6.30 to 7, Tuesday through Saturday. And you can pick us up. So I see my time about up. We appreciate all of God's people in Jesus' sweet name. God bless you. Amen. We would like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to the Church of Jesus Christ, Post Office Box 283 Baxter, Kentucky, 40806. And may God bless you.